Hey, Ron. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for joining in again. Excellent. Thank you, David. Okay, I'm going to switch over my screen here and we will get going. Hello and welcome again to another episode of Luminar Live. I am Matt Seuss and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite filters and also some of my favorite features in general just of Luminar 2018 and you know really talk about this as uh, you know how powerful of a program this can be. I have a feeling that a bunch of people are using Lightroom and uh, you know maybe thinking about leaving Lightroom and you know really want to get an idea on how powerful and how quickly and easily you can make really cool changes to your photos. So I'm going to show you that tonight. So I got this photo right here and one of the things uh excellent steve you can hear me too thanks thanks for tuning in steve uh one of the things i want to uh, show off what right away right off the bat here is i'm going to click on add filters and i'm going to start with the raw develop filter now we see it says raw develop because i am working on a raw file right now and this is from my sony a7r and if you brought in a TIFF or a JPEG or a PSD, it's not going to say raw develop. It's just going to say develop. But uh, you can do raw processing inside of Luminar 2018, and it does a pretty darn good job. Let me show you here just by cranking up the shadow slider. And let me bring this all the way up to 100. And look at the difference here in what that did. You know, I'm not seeing any noise in the shadows at all or anything like that. And it did just a huge job in bringing out the shadow detail without really having any other issues going on with the photo. You know, I can knock down the highlights just a little bit here. And, you know, right off the bat here with just a couple sliders, I'm starting to look pretty good. Now, a new feature that is inside of Luminar 2018 is some lens correction uh, um, tools. So it's in the raw develop or in the develop um, filter. And if I click on transform, this photo here was shot with a 14 millimeter lens. So I got a lot of uh, a lot of distortion in this photo. And, you know, the tree is growing crooked. And I'm going to just show you, you know, I picked this photo in particular just to show you at an extreme what can be done inside here. So on this vertical, I'm just going to bring this all the way up to minus 100. And we can see here that, you know, again, this is with a 14 millimeter lens. This tree is only maybe 10 feet in front of me. So I have a ton of distortion. This fixed a lot of this, 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 ah, let me try that say that again, fixed a lot of the distortion, but it also kind of squished it together a little bit. So all I have to do then is just adjust the aspect and I'm going to minus the aspect and that's going to sort of squeeze it back out and get this looking a little bit more natural. I'll you know, then notice on the bottom here, I have, uh, you know, the photos missing on the bottom. So I'm just going to increase the scale just a little bit and get that just a little bit more there and good. And then I'll adjust the Y offset and then that brings the photo down just a little bit. So good, I'm in, I'm in uh, perfect shape right there. If I had any other adjustments that I had to do, like chromatic aberrations, I could fix them right in here and also de-vignetting. De Let me go back to a adjust because I wanna do something now and that is, uh, I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer. And this is something that's really cool with, with uh, Luminar 2018 is the fact that you can do adjustment layers. And uh, I'm sorry, Pat, please do it on Windows. I don't have a Windows computer, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with this on the Mac tonight. Um, but, you know, adjustment layers is huge inside of Luminar. And I'm going to click up here and add a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to grab another filter. Now, this filter here that I'm going to grab, the AI filter, it's sort of new. It's it's not new to, to, to Luminar in particular, but it did come out halfway through the old version. And uh, this thing here is great. You know, increase this and, you know, look at that. It's knocking down my highlights. It's opening up my shadows. Uh, actually, with this photo, I'm not happy with the results of it. But I want to show you something that uh, I don't think I've seen anyone else messing around with this before. And I want to show you a little cool way of dealing with this Accent AI filter when it's not doing what you want it to do. And this is something that you can do with all the filters too. On this little drop down over here, if I click on that drop down, I'm going to click on the blend mode and I'm going to change the blend mode. And you can, again, you can do this with any filter. So, you know, once I show you this technique, go ahead and start experimenting with other filters to see what, what type of a look you get. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this blend mode to soft light and I'm going to reset this down to zero. And take a look at what that did. It actually now brings up a whole lot of contrast. The photo looks a little bit more saturated. I got more contrast. If I increase the boost, it's gonna bring in more clarity and more detail to that. 
and I really don't even have to do much boost at all. I'm just going to increase the boost just a little bit. And then this is the reason why I brought this on a whole new uh, layer and a whole new adjustment layer, because now I can adjust this whole layer either by doing the opacity of the layer up top here or the filters amount. And this filters amount is going to you know, lower the opacity of any of the filters that I have on this current layer. And I'm just going to back this off just a little bit. And let's maybe go to like 62, 63. And let's take a look at the before and the after. And I'll tell you what, I like that a lot better with the soft light blend mode than with the normal blend mode. You know, the normal blend mode is just becoming too flat. So switching that to the soft light, fading that back just a little bit. And I got a pretty decent looking photo here. Another cool thing inside of Luminar is that, you know, I got this little sign right over here. All of our tools up on top here to fix that is up here. I can use a clone and stamp tool or I can use the erase tool. And the erase tool is great, you know, for getting rid of this line right over here. And if you have any spots in your photo too, think of it almost as like a healing brush. You can erase the dust spots in your photo. So I'm going to, if you have any questions dur during this presentation, feel free to ask them in the chat window. I'm going to take a look and see if any questions came in while I open up another photo. So let me close out of this one here and I'll load up a different photo. Let's go get that. Okay. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? Yeah, Pat, I do understand, um, you know, this is the very first version of Windows, and so they are working really hard to try and get all those features, uh, in, you know, in line, and, you know, I can definitely feel your uh, sort of pain there. Um, I've been a Mac user for a long time, and, you know, I understand where you're coming from, because a lot of the times the Windows software was always a lot more advanced than the Mac software, and I'm still dealing with that with a couple other companies. So I do understand, you know, the frustration, but definitely be patient. Uh, Skyloom is going to be coming out with a whole bunch of free updates soon to be getting the, the Windows version a lot closer to the Mac version. And eventually they will be identical. Okay, so we've got this, uh, let's see here, I just want to see if there's another one. Um, yep, yeah, same thing, uh, Fred. Uh, so will the Windows version eventually have the same functionality as Apple? Yes, and... Uh, you know, they're working on that. If you go to uh, Skyloom's website, and I'll try and put a link into the comments section here as well, there is a uh, timeline and they have, uh, they already have some updates that are coming in November and December and January, and they're telling you what features will be coming on the Windows side. So you guys will get all caught up, caught up to speed with us on the Mac. Okay, so in this photo here, I am going to add a new filter. And uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to grab one. I'm going to do a search here for the matte look. And I'm going to grab this one. Now, uh, if you saw my Luminar Live broadcast yesterday, I was using this on some vintage Americana photos to really give it an old faded type of a look. And, you know, if you increase the amount and increase the fade, you can see how it's, it's losing the contrast. It's, you know, making it look like a little bit of an older time photo. I actually don't want to do that to this photo here. And I'm going to show you another trick again with the blending modes on using this matte look filter. So I'm going to switch the blend mode to overlay and check out what happens to the photo now look at that now i'm getting a really high contrast photo and you know i got to do a little bit of work on this to uh, bring it back but you know this photo here that i shot uh last month or actually a couple of weeks ago in zion you know i had this directional light coming in real high contrast scene and i want to keep that look to it so all i have to do now is i can mess around with the amount slider and maybe the fade slider and i can bring back some of the contrast here and uh, the filters amount i might back off on that just a little bit and let's see a little bit of a before and after on that so definitely got a lot of the contrast that i wanted in this photo if i take a look over here on the left these leaves they're a little bit too punchy went a little bit too crazy here so another great thing with luminar little brush here on the right hand side you can do this on any layer that you have or any filter that you have also in the layers but any filter in particular that you have just click on this brush and go into brush mode and I want to switch this to erase because I want to erase the effect a little bit in the trees and I'm using my bracket keys to lower my brush size you can also do that up top here I want to lower my opacity amount because I don't want to erase it at 100% let's maybe do it at like 50% and then I'm going to erase the effect out of the leaves here so I don't lose that detail in the leaves from this filter that ended up uh, giving a whole lot of contrast but blowing out my highlights over there and then we can see over on the right hand side where the filter is, it does show you the mask. I could also click up on top here on this eye icon to see exactly where I painted out that effect. 
So I'm going to click on done here and then I'm going to, uh, let's see here, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer because I lowered my filters amount here. So if I added any other filters, they're only going to be working at, uh, you know, 69% strength. So I don't want that. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and let's see here. I'm going to take one of the new filters and this is definitely one of my favorites, dodge and burn. This is going to allow me to brighten and darken certain areas of my photo. Click on start painting. And the first thing you want to do when you use this is lower the amount. 50% strength is way too high. I like anywhere from seven to nine on the lighten and same thing with the darken. We'll lower that right away. And there we go. And then on the lighten, I'm going to lower my brush size and I'm just going to go in here and I want to brighten up this little area here where the sun was coming in on it and just do that just a little bit more. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to increase my brush size and also brighten up the area over here with the leaves. Just a little bit more. Now by doing this at a low opacity, 9%, each time I click and move my mouse around, it's applying it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and it'll help brighten up the entire photo if I keep on doing that. We can see what that effect had just by lowering the amount and increasing it. And I achieved my goals. I wanted to brighten that up and brighten that area up. It's really no area that I need to darken, so I don't need to do anything with the darken. And I'm going to click on done. And one last thing I can do is just add another new adjustment layer and grab from the filters, AI filter, and just see if there's anything else I needed to do adjustment here. Maybe just give it just a little bit of a boost. And let's take a look here at the before and after. So you can see, you know, I only used a couple filters, a couple layers real fast and gave it, you know, this photo didn't need a whole lot of work on it. It just needed a little bit of contrast boost and a little bit better look to it. Now on the Mac, I can double click on this and rename any of these layers on the Windows. That is going to be coming soon in a new in an update for Windows users. Okay, I got another photo here that I'm going to show you all. And uh, let me close this out and keep those questions coming. I'll do my best to answer them live. And if you're watching this not live, uh, go ahead and ans ask questions and I'll answer those at another time as well. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, great, Pat. You know, definitely stick around with it. Um, you know, they are working hard to get this. This is their very, I mean, they've been a Mac company all along, but, you know, this is their first Windows release. So, you know, I, I remember Lightroom took forever when it first came out, you know, years of development, you know, before they were able to, uh, you know, get that for everyone. But, uh, you know, you're going to be able to see a lot of cool things and a lot of cool features are going to be coming soon. And again, I'll post that link um, in the comment section when I'm done with their roadmap that they've uh, made public in terms of when some of these features are going to be coming in. And uh, Pat's also saying the filters on Luminar are quite impressive. Using the brush for the effect is great. Yeah, it's, it's super great because, you know, you can do localized or global adjustments, which is just, you know, using any of the filters and dragging the sliders, but localized adjust adjustments on any of the filters. And we got 50 filters in here, you know, being able to do localized adjustments on any of the filters and just bring attention, you know, just put that filter apply an effect just to a certain part of your photo is, is one of the things that I just love about Luminar and being able to do that. Okay, so we got this photo here. I'm going to start out again with the raw develop. And this photo here, you know, usually when I'm photographing my night skies, I like to keep my uh, my white balance down around 2,900, uh, 3,000 Kelvin. I had, a, I had a, not a full moon, a partial moon off camera over to my left lighting up this valley. So it gave me a little bit warmer light. So this is a little bit bluer than I would actually want. So I can just increase the color temperature. And again, I'm working on my raw file, so I have access to all the color from my raw file. Okay, from there, you know, I'm not going to do anything else um, with that yet. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make another new adjustment layer because I want to grab that AI filter again and do that same technique that I was showing you before. Now here, if I did the boost, you know, we can see, you know, it's brightening it up and everything like that, doing a pretty decent job, maybe getting a little bit too bright for me on the left hand side, but let's change this back again. And I want to change this blend mode to the soft light as well. And now look at this, I got a real nice, you know, it's a little bit dark over here, but real nice contrasty photo. Um, you know, this is fitting in a lot better with the way I remember seeing this when I was photographing it. So I'm going to increase the boost a little bit and then back off again as well on that. Okay, there we go. Now, 
great thing is I can jump back to my other layer. I want to jump back to my other layer because I noticed I have a little bit of darkening around the edges here. This was with a 14 millimeter lens. Got a little bit of uh, vignetting going on here. So I can just come over here and just increase the vignetting and it's going to brighten up the edges of my frame for me. Pop back up to that top layer. And what I'm going to do now is uh, let's go here and add another new adjustment layer. And I want to show you something, another new filter that's here inside of the new Luminar. And uh, let's see here, we'll get to denoise. Now in the older version of Luminar, denoise was a tool and you had to click on the tool and it'd take a while for it to load. And it was kind of a little slow, a little bit awkward to use. Right now, now it's in a filter. And so this is really cool. And uh, let's see here. What I'm going to do is, whenever you're using uh, the denoise, you want to zoom in to 100%. So just double click on the photo, zoom in 100% so you can see. Now this was shot at ISO 320. This is like about an eight minute exposure. So I don't have a ton of noise in here to begin with. But what I would do is increase the luminosity. That's going to get rid of all that pixelated noise that you see. And we can see this already, but it actually has a little bit of an effect on this photo. If you had any color noise to it, adjust this color slider. And if you really had some serious noise and had to uh, really boost the effects of the top sliders, give that a little bit of a boost in the positive or the negative amount. Now, the great thing that I love about the denoise filter here is that you don't always need to have it you know, applying to the whole photo because I don't really see any noise down below here, but it's always, you know, it's usually in the sky is where you see it. So again, grab that brush and I want to start painting in this effect. And so if I just start cl clicking and painting in, what this is doing is painting in the effect of the denoise to the sky. We can see right over here where it's uh, applying the mask, so we can see where that's going. Also click up on top here and it gives a red overlay. So now I can go in through here and go right up and get it right to the edge of the uh, of the canyon wall. Adjust my adjust my brush size, come down a little bit more. And if it's spilling over, if that red's spilling over a little bit into the canyon, not gonna make any difference at all. So we'll get that right like that. And cool. Click that, click on done. And now I have the noise applied just to the sky. On this photo here, it looks like it's a little bit too dark again, so I can come back down to this uh, layer here and we'll just brighten up the shadows just a little bit more, come back up onto layer two. That's looking good. Last thing I would do is just add a little bit of saturation. So we'll get that here and give that just a little bit of saturation and vibrance boost. And look at that, in just a few minutes, look at that, pretty decent before and after. Now there's tons of other features. I mean, I could be on here for a couple hours just telling you all my favorite features about Luminar. Uh, we have workspaces over here. So custom workspaces, they're, they're supplied with workspaces that, and what these are, I'll just, uh, let me just add a new adjustment layer just to show you what they are. You have workspaces here. So these are all collections, you know, think of them as presets for a whole bunch of filters that are loaded without any adjustments at all made. So if you click on professional, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of filters that, you know, some of these are really intense, um, you know, um, filters to really help you out with your photos. They have other presets here or uh, other workspaces. Let's go back here to uh, Quick and Awesome. And there's only a couple in here. So you have the Accent, AI Filter, Saturation and Vibrance, and Clarity. And that's it. And just with those three presets, you can do a whole lot with your photo. There's also other workspaces. You can say, you know, create your own workspaces. So you get a whole list of filters, save it as a workspace. You can see I here I have a few of my own favorite. And... Um, you know, so uh, go ahead and create your own workspaces and that's gonna help you out with your workflow too. And that's what's cool about this is that you can customize your whole entire viewing of this program. You got presets here that you can use. You got custom workspaces so that you can only use and see just the filters that you want to see inside of here, allowing you to just get in and get out with your photo and do some amazing things to it. I'm gonna see if we had any other, uh, where's the done button, can't find it. Um, Let's see here. So if you're using this as a plugin, Mark, I'm using this as a standalone. If you're using it as a plugin, you'll have an apply button. And I forget, um, I keep on bouncing back between both versions. It's either in the upper left-hand corner or the upper right-hand corner. It'll, set a, set, it'll say apply. That'll bring you back into Lightroom or Photoshop or Elements, whichever program you were using. Uh, right now, because I'm using it as a standalone, I don't have a done button. Up on top here, on the right-hand side, I can click and export it to an image, and then I'll be able to change the uh, format. And so these are the different formats, the file formats that I can save it to. I could also, if I want to, send it to Messages, uh, Facebook. I could also have it open in all of these other programs 
and uh, there's also here a file and save. Now again, this here is coming. This isn't for Windows yet. It's coming. Uh, they definitely want to get this to you, but this file save allows you to save it as a .lmnr file. You can see the extension right over here, right up on top here, and it gives you the option to save the original resources to the document, which would be the original file, and also save the history, and it's not only that, but it saves all the adjustments you made. So all of these sliders that I've did here, all of these layers, all the masks, it's going to save it so you can close out the program and go work on it again in another couple days. And if you have that history option checked, all of this history up on top here is going to be saved as well and allowing you to, you know, again, a week from now, I can open up this photo and it'll be just as if I had, uh, didn't even, uh, open, didn't even close it. Okay. So, uh, so you make a new layer every time you choose a new filter. Why? You know, I don't always do that. Um, I was showing you a couple reasons, um, you know, just a couple different workflows, David. But uh, one of the reasons why I was doing that, and especially on this layer here, was because I wanted to use the filters amount uh, to adjust the intensity of this filter overall. So, you know, this filter here, even with it maxed, down. Let me increase this to 100. And even with this boost down to zero, the overall effect of the filter was still a little too strong. So when it's on its own separate layer, I can now use this filters amount to just adjust that filter and fade in and out the effect of just that particular filter. If I had this where I had, you know, just a whole bunch of layers all stacked on top, that filters slider, filters amount slider is going to affect all of those layers. So I only wanted to, to affect this accent AI filter. So that's why I made a separate new adjustment layer just so that I could do it just to that filter. So I hope that answered your question. And uh, again, hey, um, I'm out of time here. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And, uh, you know, feel free to go ahead and uh, ask more questions if you have any. I'll check them out in the uh, in the uh, comments section there. And also, if you're looking for more instruction, you know, be sure to go to Skyloom's website. They have a ton of great videos out there. Uh, my good friend Jim Nix, he also has a whole bunch of free videos that I'm probably sure you've seen a bunch of them on. And I'm also going to be coming out with uh, my own uh, Mastering, Mastering Luminar 2018. I have an Aurora one, too, uh, online course. So, uh, you know, hit me up if you're interested in that. And so once again, I'm Matt Seuss, and thank you so much for tuning in to Luminar Live, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.